Hi folks, my name's Dick Coughlin. Now, over the course of, the, of time on the internet, I like to try to keep, my, I made a promise to try and keep my focus on, you know, important issues. Even if I didn't take them fully seriously, I would make sure that the substance of the videos I made were dealing with, you know, issues that needed to be talking about. I was gonna try and stay away from trivial, petty, ultimately irrelevant bullshit. But the problem is that those little tiny annoying things that you that you see all the time that just you know just rub rub you every which way but right you know they eventually over course time they build up so i thought i would make one video in which i would try and get out as many of these these like tiny little you know ultimately just annoying little things that i didn't feel each warranted their own individual video but maybe collectively they could, and I'm sure you've probably got some too. Feel free to list yours below. So without further ado, here is my, you know, relatively longish list of minor, petty, irrelevant grievances that I have with the internet. Enjoy. Number one, people who still think that it's funny or clever to post the comment, oh, cocaine is a hell of a drug. And it's not because it's unoriginal, it's not because it's fucking, it's older than me, it's the fact that the people who are posting it don't have a fucking clue. You wanna know that cocaine's a hell of a drug? I know better than you, my friend. I did, I done it, quit it, went there and got the t-shirt. But believe me, I'm clean now. The only thing that I miss about drugs in general is taking them all the time and being off my tits. It was amazing. But apart from that, fuck that comment. These people who seem to think that, that they, like, they like to say, if, if, they, if they're getting a lot of people, you know, a lot of uh, negative reaction, they say, well, if I'm pissing people off or if I've got a lot of haters, I must be doing something right. Wh why? Why must you be doing something right if you've got a lot of haters or if a lot of people are, are pissed off or angry at you? If I walked into a restaurant and stood on a table and squatted on the table and shat all over it and pissed in everyone's face, I wouldn't be very popular. Does that mean that what I've just done is right? Also, that, say, that phrase, that saying, tends, does seem to imply that people who nobody hates and who nobody ever gets, and who never pisses anybody off, is somehow doing something wrong. Stop trying to rationalise your own fucking unpopularity. Bear with me on this one, because it's not, it's not as cliche as you think, but people, it's not people who just write first in a comment, the people who get the first comment. That's not, I don't, I don't have a problem with that, right? I kind of get it, okay? But it's the people who insist on posting a comment saying first on channels that have virtually no subscribers or channels that don't get any, you know, if you're doing it to PewDiePie or a Logan Paul video, I fine, I get it, right? Right, that's, a, that's, that's fine, I can deal with that. But it's the people who come onto my videos, you know, who, who post first. Like, the video's been up 12 minutes. Like, have some fucking ambition. Next one is people who make videos uh, where they talk about a subject and their res or, or something that's happening that they don't like or that they want to dismiss. And their argument is, why are people talking about this or why are people taking this seriously? Nobody cares. If nobody cares, why are you fucking wasting your time and mine by making a pissing video about it in the first place. If nobody cared, we wouldn't need to fucking talk about it. You care. When we talk about freedom of speech incessantly on this fucking website, it's the people who like to, who, who tell me and others, and who say this and expect me to fucking believe them, who say, who, who do that Voltaire quote, say, well, uh, whilst I might not agree with what you say, I will defend to the death your right to say it. And I'm like, Really? Would you? Would you defend to the death my right to say things you don't like? If the government said Dick Coughlin, you know, his rights, are be his freedom of speech rights and freedom of expression has been revoked, he's not allowed to ever express his opinion in any way whatsoever unless you personally fight and die for his rights. Then you can. Would you do that? Because I fucking wouldn't. People who 
make videos that get them in a get a lot of attention and cause a lot of a lot of fucking you know controversy and get a lot of fucking negative feedback and generate a lot and, and you know and very antagonistic and deliberately provocative someone like Nicole Arbor for example and when they when they are you know when people sort of you know ask them you know uh, as as it's gone after it's gone on for a few days, they, they try and use the excuse saying, "Hey, I just I'm just trying to start the conversation. I'm just trying to get a conversation." This is the internet. It is nothing but conversations. You do not need to deliberately go out of your way to say something needlessly fucking offensive to get a conversation going. Particularly when the conversation really actually only boils down to 95% of it is people discussing whether or not you're a massive cunt or just a huge cunt. Say what you mean and stand by it, you ballless little bastards. Whenever people stop talking about a particular news story that you know, that other people have been in, in, interested in and start talking about another one because it's been a couple of weeks. People, these people, people who claim that this new story that people are talking about, oh, it's just a distraction to distract you from. Do you know how much news is happening now? Everything's a frigging distraction. Where am I supposed to be frigging looking? I'm trying my best here. I'm not, you know, it's, it's a distraction. What is? People who preface a video by saying, so I'm probably going to get a lot of hate you know, from people for this video, probably going to get a lot of thumbs down and a lot of hate in the comment. But not just people who do that, people who do that, who specifically you know, brand them themselves and pride themselves. They put it in their bios. They put it as part of the, it's it's part of their character. They say they they talk about how you know how edgy they are and how they you know they appear they're pissing off the old you know PC brigade and they're they're here to say the things that are you know that are shocking and you know not that are controversial and that are you know but they're going to say them anyway because they're a fucking renegade. And then they preface their video saying, okay, so this prop video is probably going to get oh fuck off. Just fucking say what you've got to say. Either, either be a fucking prick or don't be a prick. Be, be controversial, be, be deliberately edgy or don't be. But don't start your video by fucking expect saying that, you know, trying to get sympathy from me or anyone else by expecting us to fucking care. You, you, you want, want it. If it wasn't for controversy, if it wasn't for the offensiveness that your videos caused, you'd have fuck all reason to fucking pay attention to you because you're devoid of substance and value, right? It's because anyone can be shocking and controversial. Try being good at the same time. I hate these fucking weed cultists, these fucking people who, you know, not just potheads in general, right? But people who, in, who think that marijuana is the elixir of life and the cure for everything and who insist on recommending it to everyone for any fucking ailment whatsoever. No matter what it is, they have you tried fucking weed? Oh, you know, have you tried? No, no, weed doesn't cure or treat everything. Okay, there are some things that it does actively, actively it does fuck all for. Yeah, if I smoked a load of weed and whether, regardless of what d condition I had, I'd feel better because that's what being high is. Even if you've got nothing wrong with you, being high feels better than fucking than not being high, right? And the people particularly, and they'll get them in the videos, in this video too, because I do a lot of my videos, I'm very animated and I'm very fucking, you know, uh, I'm very, uh, you know, I'm all over the place, I'm jumping and shouting around. People say, man, you need to take some weed and fucking chill out. Maybe you need to fucking, you know, get angry. Maybe you need to do a line or something. You don't get people like me. You don't see anyone else going round. Right, fucking trying to fucking convince people who are maybe a bit mellow, a lot calmer, a lot more reserved, and insisting, telling them to go fucking, you know, come on, just smoke a bowl, of, smoke a bowl of fucking crystal before you do a video for fuck's sake, mate. Put some effort, put some, give me some fucking energy. Right, you don't get fucking people saying, oh, you've got athlete's foot. Have you tried meth? Now, I don't like to generalise here, but this is, in my experience, I'm sure there are problem. There are probably men who do this too. Yeah, but this is usually a women thing. But women who add you on Facebook, who if if you if you go if you make the 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 faux pas of going to their profile page and liking like three pictures, one of which was like over a month old, 
They fucking, they message you and tell you to stop stalking them and then block you. If you don't want people looking at the shit on your Facebook page, fucking don't put it up there. Pardon me for taking an interest in you, right? And don't demean the act of stalking. Stalking should at least involve someone having to get up and put their fucking coat on. I can't stand these fuckers on YouTube who, who pride themselves as being independent media, alternative media outlets, who sit there and bang on about how you can't trust the mainstream corporately owned media. And then 95% of the fucking content and the stories they talk about come from, you know, are sourced from websites and media organisations that are literally corporately fucking sponsored and owned fucking mainstream outlets. You can't sit there and tell me that I shouldn't trust the mainstream media and then every other story you starts, well the New York Times reported this, the BBC reported this. Also, why does having your audience fund your fucking, fu fund, just because your audience are the ones who fund your channel doesn't make you more reliable, particularly if that audience has funded you based on the, the idea that you've got an ideological narrative. Because then you've got to think, well, should we say this or should we talk about this? Because we might lose a lot of people, a lot of people might cancel their subscription. Right, so there's, so stop that, stop that crap. People who use the argumentum ad unpopulum. These are YouTubers who have all the charisma and charm and, and, you know, and, you know, who are about as, as fascinating and interesting as a fucking, you know, Russian contraflow system. That ev and, and they've been on here, they've been on YouTube for years, made thousands of videos, and they've got 12 fucking subscribers at best. And, you know, and, and, what, and two of them are their own fucking backup channels, right? And they sit there and make the argument, well, the reason I, I'm, I'm so unpopular, that, uh, the reason I'm so unpopular and I don't get a lot of subscribers is because what I'm doing is far too radical and far too subversive and people can't handle it. They're not, they're not able to deal with it. They're not intellectually capable of getting their mind with it. No, it's because you're fucking boring as horseshit, mate. You're a drippy, boring motherfucker with a face like a smacked ass. Fucking, you know, just cheer, cheer up a bit. Now this usually happens when pe when you make a video targeting a specific a person or people who are of a specific religion, but it can happen with any other type of sort of d uh, different type of uh, grouping that we have. Right, if you make a video about uh, about someone who's a Christian or Christianity or Christians or whatever, right, you'll get people going, oh right, you may have a go at Christians, uh, yeah, do videos about the Muslims or the Jews, yeah, you wouldn't do that, would you? And then on the video, and then you point out to them because they've never seen any other video of you, they've just assumed you've never done videos about Muslims and Jews. And when you point them out, to them, and when you point it out to them, actually, I have done these videos about it, right? You go to those videos, and on the Muslim ones, you've got Muslims going, oh yeah, you have a go at Muslims, everyone has a go at Muslims these days, do videos about the Jews or the Christians, wouldn't you? And then you go, well, all about these videos here, and they fuck off and never reply. And then on the videos you've got about Jews, people sit there and go, oh, you make videos about, yeah, you pick on the Jews, just like you always do, right? You don't make videos about the Christians or the Muslims, do you? Right? I hate all of you, fuck off. And this one is a little bit more substantive, but you know, I just couldn't find a way of getting it into a single video. Right, and this is something that happens that the right wing, that right wing, the right wing, and it's been do they've been doing it for ages, right? And, and you know, for many, many years now, you know, but more so in recent times, the right wing have 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 constantly you know, you know, and and frequently used, you know, at almost, you know, at a, at a, with monotonous regularity and frequency. They have bastardised the poem, the very famous poem by Martin, uh, Martin, Nimu Martin Nimula, Mula, right? The famous poem that goes, first they came, right? First they came for the socialists, then they came for the, right? In the last few years, it's been impossible, almost, to keep up with how many times, right, the people, people on the right wing and the far right have arrogantly decided to reappropriate and do some sort of cover version of that poem, right? To try and create some false equivalency between something, between someone who's been some minor fucking, some minor little thing that's happened to them and the, and you know, the, what, what ultimately led up to the Holocaust in 1930s Germany, right? To give you an idea of how obsessed they are, this is what I could, this is what I managed to find in half a day's research. These are groups or people 
that have actually that have had first they came uh, a first they came you know you know uh, posted about them uh we got pepe the frog alex jones milo yarnopoulos gamers gamer girls and video games the daily stormer christian bakers right and christian florists stefan molyneux the banks, insurance companies, gun owners, Julian Assange, climate skeptics, comedians, right, tax resistors, the you know, internet memes, right, homeschoolers, statues, stained glass windows, confederates, the <laughs> soft drinks, the truth, billionaires, pre-born, flags and crosses, smokers, Gone with the Wind, Gert Wilders, Britain First, Marion Le Pen, Katie Hopkins, Gab.com, and that one was started by them, right, which is it double sad. Stephen Crowder, John Tron, PewDiePie, Count Dacula, Tommy Robinson, anti vactors The Concept of History, and Hamburgers. And trust me, I am not jo joking, that is only the tip of the fucking iceberg. Now, it's not the fact that you reappropriate and, and decided to, to, you know, to, to take that poem and apply it to some bullsh petty bullshit that's happened to you that you want to blow out of proportion. Right? It's not that. It's the fact that at what point are you going to get on to the next line of the play, to, of the poem, which is, and then they came. First they came for, you can't, say, you can't keep saying first they came for over and over and over and over and over again. You can only have one first. Traditionally, there's a, the second one is, and then they came for, right? It's because you don't want it to end. Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Dick Coughlin. That is the end of my petty grievances. I'll probably think of 25 more as soon as I stop recording this. Thank you for watching. Good night. May God be less. Support me on Patreon. Thank you very much.